it going? Oh, fine. I just put my baby down and oh. playing, playing, you know, dad. <sighs> oh my God. How many kids you have? Uh, three girls. Three girls. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, how old are they? 11, nine, and almost four months. Oh, wow. Four months. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's so awesome. So are you tired? <laughs> yeah, I've been up. Yeah, for a few hours, but yeah. Uh, uh, that's what it's all about. I got three yeah. kids myself, but they're older. They're in their 20s, so I get more sleep now. <laughs> right. Yep. I have twins in there, so I can relate to being tired. Oh, wow. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time, you know, to be here. We're, we're looking You're forward welcome. to you coming to Change Point Theater. Check uh, Poughkeepsie, right? Yeah. You've never been, right? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think you've been with, with us, but I, I'm wondering if you've been out. Have you been this way in New York? Uh, not lately, then, or? Uh, well, I was born in upstate, and oh, um, oh, I'm sure I've been there. It's close. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Where were you born in upstate? Alfred University. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. You've heard of it? Yes, I have. I have friends whose kids have gone there recently. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's further north from us. I think it's another, oh, I'm guessing a few hours from here, I think. Three or four, maybe, if I'm right. I think so. So, cool. Yeah. Well, so here we are. So, anyway, we're excited. And so I, I looked up some stuff about you guys because I didn't know a lot. I know your music, but I'm like, let me look up these guys. So, uh, t- tell me, though, because I did read that you guys have been friends from, what, high school or su- earlier? Well, uh, my brother, who isn't in the band anymore, I've known him for a long time. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Your whole life, practically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> David, David and his brother, Ben, our original bass player, I met them at Judson. So we started, I started the band at Judson 15 years ago. Okay. And um, we have, uh, let's see, I'm really only the, the only... Well, the Citizen Way w- was eight years ago when we signed. We changed our name from the least of these to Citizen Way. And we had our four original members, but then Josh and Ben left. And so now um, David and Daniel and I have been going strong for almost four years now together. It's so just the three of us. Great. Great. Yeah. And it says, oh, in high school. So did you play in high school? It was in high school or you said sooner that you knew each other from no, I, we met in college. Oh, college. Okay. I think I just read school and I was thinking high school. All right. So in college. So, I mean, just tell, how did that get together? Did you just start playing and you're like, hey, let's just take this well, on the I road? Really wanted to, I wanted to be in a band and I wanted to share the gospel and I just loved writing songs. And I was in a band since I was 13 years old, touring you know, the country when I was 19. And I just felt like I wanted to be like my heroes, like Steve Chris Chapman, right. Petra, you know, PFR and all those guys. And I just feel like, you know, being a pastor's son and a musician's son, my mom and my dad, I, um, I really just, man, I wanted to be like Billy Graham with a guitar. Yeah. And, and so uh, my brother, you know, too, and he's a, um, he's a worship leader. He's not with the band anymore, but he's a worship leader in his um, church near where we live. And we just, uh, we, we're very, you know, we call ourselves citizen way because I'm a citizen in the kingdom of heaven, following the way, truth, and life, you know, and his name is Jesus. So I've been through enough in life to where I'm just, I'm really, I love what we do and I love being very direct about it. And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why we started, you know, we started the band 15 years ago, but even the day one, I, we, I called it the least of these because I wanted to serve people. So when we changed our name to Citizen Way, we kept the mission. But only until last year, it, it, or it took that long to where I started a thing called Generosity Rocks, where we actually give 10% of all of our merchandise sales to all the places we play. So any local ministry, pregnancy centers, food banks, homeless shelters, just a family in need. And uh, we also support artists. That's how we paid for our record. We have people who sponsor our record. They bought us our bus. Um, wow. People joined us in the studio while we made the record. And, and you'll see them in the liner notes. So I think it's, for me, it's, it's been a whole life thing. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, let's start a band. It was, I'm terrible at doing my accounts. I'm <laughs> terrible at 
you know, like I not terrible. I should say I was very directly called, and, and I think just because I was interested in writing songs and traveling and, and turning the amps to eleven, but telling people that Jesus loves them, and it's kind of like Billy Graham with the guitar, you know. So that's what we do, and it's been really difficult the last four years to keep going, but we we made it, and we we continue to go, and the record shows. A lot of the songs are content wise. They're always built off scripture, but you know, losing our son, Jeremiah, losing guys in the band, um, losing my job when I moved to Nashville, you know, my security, uh, it's, it's either, and I either believe this stuff that I read or I don't, it's either true or it's not true. And I, I believe it's true. So I believe that, uh, what we sing about and, and, the fact that we stand on God's word from cover to cover and we lift up the name of Jesus is the point of why we exist. No matter who is in the band or, you know, where we are, that's what we, that's what we do. And um, trying to find ways to help people in the process is really fun. When you hand somebody a check at the end of the night to their ministry, no strings attached, it's just so great. Oh my so God. that's who we are. That's what we do. That's why we do what we do. And, I don't think I would be willing to do it if, if, if it wasn't that, because being away like we are is, is just, you know, being away from your family, like it's just not worth it. So uh, my family agrees, my wife and my kids and I, we're on the same page and that's why we do what we do. That's awesome. That is an awesome story. I did not know all those details because, you know, looking at it, everybody always thinks, even though we know it's not true, like, oh, it's easy or, oh, wow, look at you guys on the road. And, and you know, it's not easy. But that is like the cool story, especially I knew a little bit about Generosity Rocks. I read some stuff, but I didn't realize it's like where you go, that's what you do. Each place you go, you pick. I did not realize that part. I thought it was a yeah. specific group that you did. So that's yeah. amazing. So like, oh my gosh, just the whole thing. I know it's not easy to be on the road. And the fact that it's you're keeping your eyes on God is really, that's where it is. You know, your focus is on in the ministry and not just the music that's kind of almost secondary right that's like yeah this it's, is what like the, it's like the door opener right it's you the know? way to and then you have yeah. a conversation and music can absolutely lead somebody to jesus no no question but mm -hmm. you know for for us it's we it's in tandem you know it's two sides of the same coin so yeah we give wherever we go so like when we're in poughkeepsie we're gonna all talk to the promoter that day and mm -hmm. kind of get a feel for what the need is that day and then we just tell people during the night and they can tip, you know, they buy merch and sometimes, you know, a t-shirt they'll buy for 25 bucks or something mm -hmm. and they'll tip another five bucks on top and every 10% of everything that comes in goes. And so it's really fun wow, to give that's to a family. Amazing. And or, so what do you, you know, do that night then? So you don't know anything about the area. So you're, you're talking to the promoter and they're telling you during the day and we learn, you know, okay. what, what the. I'm like, I'm with people all day. I don't hang out on the bus very often. I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, I'll go make some coffee in the morning and go do some Bible study, maybe go for a run. But like, I really want to know what the community is going through. Mm -hmm. So that by the time I get up on stage, like I've met as many people as I can to have a relationship with people and to know what, how we can meet their needs, you know, because singing songs is great. And the Lord uses that. And and giving in in addition to that is just practical it's tangible you mm -hmm. know and it's in their community we're going to leave but you know you guys are there so we want to be a part of what the lord's doing in your community and this is just the way we thought is an easy way to do that so no strings attached we sacrifice 10 percent of our income there isn't much to go around in the first place you know it looks like it but there truly isn't and right that's right. why we raise money you know like musicianaries like missionaries mm -hmm. i think we would have called it quits it had had we not been able to do that it's just to be honest it's just the music industry is just too hard so right. especially in christian music industry you know people don't buy music like they used to so it makes everything kind of more difficult but that doesn't mean that people don't want music it just means you know there's gotta you gotta basically find other ways to get it to them so this is our way of doing that by giving first and watching the lord provide for us and our needs so people will get inspired by what we're doing. And they're like, man, what do you need? And people will literally say, well, let me buy you a car. Because I didn't have a car when we moved here, you know. And so somebody bought me a car. Oh, my somebody gosh. Somebody bought my wife's car. Somebody bought, uh, lots of people helped us get our bus. Uh, it burned down in March on our last tour. We oh, still geez. don't really know why, but it did. 
and uh, we think it was an electric. It was off in the parking lot. Oh, so interesting. And you know, people paid for our record. You know, when you give, the Bible says, "A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed." And that's true. So we mm -hmm. wanted to walk by faith in that regard and little tangible ways. You know, wherever we go and. We also partnered with a ministry called ShareWord Global, and we distribute Bibles all over the world, especially in places where it's illegal to have them. You know, yeah. people in Western China, for instance, I mean, you're endangering your life and the life of your family just for having a Bible. So it's amazing this ministry goes into places in the world where it's dangerous and they distribute Bibles. And so that'll be one thing that we're helping people sponsor when they're there. Five bucks for a Bible, you know, it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And you can sponsor Citizen Way through Generosity Rocks. That is amazing. That is just like, this is the highlight of the whole time talking to you now. I'm like, I don't even know what, <laughs> anything else I had to ask you. It was like minimal because yeah. I, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> I always, I always steer that way because like if a lot of people ask us, not, not use the radio, but like Q and A, like what's your favorite color? And I'm like, <laughs> like oh, really? Yeah. Anything. You know, like that's, that's fine. But like, we always try to steer it toward why we're here and how to yeah. help and serve people and, Man, that always just, it's so fulfilling to, to do that. So our, our, our Q and A times before the shows are some of my favorites. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. That's going to be really awesome. And you know, I'm so, I get chills thinking of what, like just knowing more about this generosity rocks, because like I said, I had no idea that that's exactly what you did, you know? So the, the point is like, especially when you come to Poughkeepsie, you'll see there's so many things in the area. And that's why, like, we always say like, we're in the middle of Poughkeepsie. We, the church used to be a little off, still in Poughkeepsie, but a little off, but now we're right, like, right in the center of the area where there's a big need for so many different things there. Yeah. Um, and we know that God brought it there because our old church had burned down and we had to, it's so funny, right? The burning of something, whatever the reason. Um, and now we're smack in the middle of the area that really there's a lot of need there. So it's yeah. really awesome that this, I really, I really, I, I give you guys like, I don't even know. I, I, credit's not the word. I just, I really love it. I love the idea of that. Um, yeah, it's fun. We do too. Oh, wow. So I, I just can't wait to see you guys. <laughs> um, so I just, so then the biggest challenge is the band do you think would be more or less being away from your families or is there, I mean, is that kind of, what's the biggest challenge to, I know you're keeping going by keeping your eye on God and you know, you're doing the right thing. I mean, this is huge, but what's, well, I mean, yeah, getting on the road is, is hard. I mean, actually being able to get on the road, um, you know, there's, there's a point where I was like, man, if, I, I don't know how we can keep going if we're, if it's just flying in and flying out, like we're supposed to be a lot bigger than we are perceived. And so we really need our own transportation, our own sound and lights to do what we know we need to do. And that was, that was the most difficult part is figuring out how to do that. But honestly, I just hit my knees in the morning and just asked the Lord. And he, he just said, start giving away what you have. Mm. And that was what GR generosity rocks was. And so, uh, yeah, being away from our family, but having a bus allows me to take them with me. So, right, great. You know, that's it's a. I know it seems like a simple thing, like it's just a bus, but like it's a huge deal to be able to have your family with you on the road, mm -hmm. agreeing with what we're doing. Otherwise, you know, we're gone for you know. Since I did a twelve day tour a couple weeks ago, and it was just too much for me. Mm -hmm. you know it's just I don't like doing those it's just you lose I get a lot done but I right. just my family needs me and I want to be around them and you know I could build whatever church or whatever ministry or whatever band but if I ever forsake my family mm -hmm. for that who cares right right who cares that's not the priority. so you know I, I we that's one of the reasons you know we only do so many shows per year I think it's because the Lord protects me from all that stuff because I asked him to. So mm -hmm. he does. Right. You know, there's some bands that do, you know, quite a bit. And just for me, it just, it's, it doesn't work as well to do 250 dates a year, you know, or whatever it is. It's just, I would never, I think, I, I think I would regret it someday. So we do what we can and we give where we go and we just have fun with what we have. It's a good balance. It is. It sounds great. I love that you said you asked him and that's what it is. I mean, I think we, we forget that it's so simple to just say, you know, 
I'm asking you like, you know, I may not know how to do this, but this is what I really need. I want to be here with my family. I want to do this. And then it works. You know, it's so simple. He listens so quickly, doesn't he? Sometimes I'm amazed yeah. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, why did I ask sooner? I guess he was just waiting for that. Um, oh, man, totally. You know, one of, the, one of my favorite quotes is from Billy Graham. He said, you know, if I, if I could go back and do it again, I would have prayed more. And mm. people don't know how to pray, which is, I think, I, I, I didn't, nobody really said, this is how you pray. My dad just showed me, he's like, talk to the Lord, use his words, cry for help, say nothing. You know, you are talking to the God of the universe in a supernatural, interdimensional way that Christians are not taught how to do. And because most of us don't, you know, it's not passed down, but the heart of a child knows how you talk to your father you know mm -hmm. and um that's how i do it i just talk to my my uh my father you know and so i i use god's word that's why we put it in the lord's prayer you know mm -hmm. our new song and this is how jesus taught us to pray and realizing that god's in control and it re my dad said ben it's in the book read the book <laughs> right right so i just it's take it and take him at his word and talk yeah. to him that way yeah, yeah. It, it's true. You know, it's true. And it's just like you said, talking just to talk. I'm like, I would talk to God like that too. I always remember thinking, gosh, all these people, the way they pray, I, I'm not that person. I can't be like, you know, doing it. But I just talked to him like, hey, you know, um, <laughs> here I am. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. It's so like a father talking to his son, a son talking to his father, you know? Right, right. And um, that's all I know how to do. And right. I mean, we teach, there's kids who grow up thinking you have to go to a priest thinking you have to go i'm like no jesus is the great high priest you can that's what the holy spirit is it's it's mm -hmm. this supernatural interdimensional telephone right, right at any point in time throughout the day that you have access to because the bible says we can approach the throne of grace with confidence you mm -hmm. know there's an old stephen curtis chapman song with that in it and um i just i take him at his word that's what we do so I, I believe it and I just sing about it. And by faith, I, I, I not only believe, but I, I try to teach people to do the same. Sorry, I'm doing 40 mm -hmm. things at once because my, oh. I have a flat tire and my friend Ainsley who oh. mixed, do you know the song, um, 10,000 Reasons? Yes. You know, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Well, he's coming over to my house right now. He mixed that song ah. to help fill my tire because it's all flat. Oh. <laughs> and he's like, I'm here. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> well, that's awesome. That's awesome. I know you have a million things to do. This is so cool. I feel very privileged and honored to be in the middle of this at the second. But <laughs> well, hey, yeah, he's, his name's Ainsley Grocer. He's a dear friend of mine. Yeah, he oh. mixed that song. There he is. You want to? You oh, say hi to him? yes, I want to say hi. <laughs> Ainsley! <laughs> hi, buddy. Hi, Mike. Good day. I have a, I'm on a radio station and I just told him my, the guy who makes 10,000 reasons and a lot of for King and Country stuff. Yeah. Did I, I, I How I are you? Awesome. That yeah. is so awesome. You're a celebrity. Uh, <laughs> you're a celebrity. <laughs> Ainsley's a good friend of mine. And he, he's like, Hey, I heard you have a flat tire. Let me oh. come over and fill it up for you. So I'm like, are you kidding? Uh, really uh, Were you really? Uh, I've had a flat tire for a week or two now and I have to fill uh, it up just to go get it fixed but oh I no time. this is going to be the most interesting interview you've ever had on video. i love it i'm, I'm, I'm honored <laughs> plugging in my extension cord to give ainsley the compressor to fill up my car so that oh. i can go to autozone and have them replace it <laughs> this is Here great goes. I Here it goes. let me hear it let me hear it <laughs> And I know I should have let you go already, but I'm like, I'm going to keep watching this. This is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's Ainsley. Uh, he, uh, he's, wow. he has a, a, a big uh, studio in his house, and he's mixed tons of songs that you sung. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, that was an extra benefit now, an extra plus, yeah. an extra gift. Well, I appreciate your time so much. Um, I can't wait to meet you. Um, so uh, I don't have any final words. That was like the best. Do you have anything else you want to tell me that I didn't ask? <laughs> well, I would just say to any, any listeners out there who, you know, come from a pretty broken home or, you know, a really religious upbringing, you know, 
and you think this whole Jesus thing's a sham, just do what my dad and my, my wife did. Just say, Jesus, if you really are who you say you are, prove it. And he will. He loves you. So if that's why that's why I'm going to come to Poughkeepsie and tell you. So might as well tell you again here. Perfect. It's perfect. Thank you so much, Ben. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll be seeing you then on the 27th. I'll be there. <laughs> quicker than you know. Yeah. All right. Go get that tire fixed and keep that baby sleeping and all that good stuff. <laughs> I he will is see still you. sleeping. Yeah, I hope so. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, great. Hey, all right. Good to meet you, and I'll see you in uh, you. a few weeks. Yes. Great. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.